One of the most famous places where marble uh, has been used in history is, of course, in, in ancient Rome and in, in the Mediterranean area. Uh, so this marble, as I mentioned uh, earlier, starts its life out as limestone. And one of the primary ways that large quantities of limestone are produced is that they are uh, seafloor sediments. They're chemical sediments that are, produ that are precipitated out of seawater. They form from a combination of shells of small organisms living in the water that die and drop their shells to the sea floor. These dissolve and recrystallize and form uh, massive deposits of, of limestone on the sea floor. Uh, the Mediterranean era area has been uh, oceanic for a long, long time. Now, the Mediterranean Sea hasn't always been the, the seaway that's been there. In fact, there is a much older sea that predates the Mediterranean called the Tethys. Sea, and it was in this Tethys Sea that the carbonates that form the, uh, the what are now the Mediterranean and Aegean marbles were first uh, first laid down, uh, and then as that sea closed uh, due to subduction and plate tectonics. Um, there was a great metamorphic event that is responsible, among many other things, for forming the Alps uh, and many of the other mountainous bodies uh, around the Mediterranean and around uh, that part of Europe. Uh, those seafloor sediments at that point were subjected to very high pressures and temperatures and recrystallized to form the, the marbles that, we, uh, that were then later exploited um, once the sea had opened back up again to make the, the young Mediterranean, the new Mediterranean Sea, and this became a center of culture uh, with high demand for these type of materials. So um, I mentioned in our introduction about uh, marble and its use in sculpture, but I hope some of you were thinking also, hey, what about architecture? Um, one of the most famous uh, buildings made of marble is the Parthenon in Athens. And there were many, many Greek temples made out of marble. And the Greeks uh, exploited the marble from particular quarries, uh, very famous ones in antiquity. The Romans went one step further. Um, and as they were colonizing the uh, the, what would become the, the Roman Empire, uh, one of the things that they would do is they would use imported marble columns for the facades of temples, for the fronts of temples, as a way of showing Roman power and uh, Roman wealth because they would uh, build the most of the temple out of local stone, sometimes limestone, and then they would bring in all of the columns just for the porch and some of the sculpture around that porch area. And that would be of Carrara marble or from marble from one of these other uh, famous antique quarries like the, the Parian marble or the Naxian marble. And the whole point of this was that they would bring in these enormous column shafts as proof that Rome had the ability to quarry these, ship them whole, bring them across sea and land, and then erect them at this building all in a very short space of time. And that's an incredible amount of expense uh, that they were going to. And this was purely to demonstrate to those citizens the power of the Roman Empire and its systems.